Okay, question four, we have the large data set. Yay. So, I'll try and remember to put a link to it down below. If I forget, you can find it on the Excel website. So, Helen is studying the daily mean winch feed for Camborne using the large data set from 1987. How exciting. Uh, the data for one month is summarised in the table. Part A wants us to find the mean, part B wants us to find the standard deviation. Now our calculators can do this for us. We can even put frequency tables in. Now it's a little bit complicated, or well, not too much, but what you need to do is press when you've got your calculator on, and I'm using a Casio Glassways. So I first of all press shift and then mode. Scroll down to statistics, which is on the second screen. And for me, I then press three. You then get an option for frequencies and you want those to be on. So when we've done that, we then go on to the menu, 6 for statistics, 1 for one variable, and what you should now have is a table with X on the left and frequency on the right. So we put in our wind speeds as the X values and the frequencies for the frequencies. Now what do we do? about this column where we go on N A we just pretend it doesn't exist. So once you put those data in, press A C to go back to the main calculation screen I suppose. And then you want to press options which on mine is just under the shift button. Now if you press that you will get an option for variable calculations. So I think for me it was two. So press two and you will get this screen. Now the mean is x bar. So our mean is 10.2. And I guess we could put uh, the units. Do we know the units? We don't know the units, so we won't. And the standard deviation is the sigma x. So sigma is 3.172. Cool. If you're not happy using your calculator, you can, of course, use the formulas, but let the calculator do as much work for you as it possibly can. Okay, next up, uh, the mean and standard deviations of the daily mean wind speed for the other months from the large data set for Gambon in 1987 are given below in this table. The months are not in order. Part C says, using your knowledge of the large data set, suggest giving a reason which month uh, had a mean of 11.57. So if we look at the means, 11.57 is the largest mean. So if we go to the large data set, here it is. Notice the dates in the left hand column start with uh, the fifth month, so May, and we end on the tenth month, so October. So October is the most wintry month between May and October. So it's likely 
this one would have been October. So for part C, we're saying October as uh, we could say because October is certainly in the autumn slash winter so it is most likely to have the highest mean wind speed Okay, then we're told uh, the data for the months is summarised in the box plots on the opposite page. There are the box plots. Uh, we are told they are not in month order or the same order as in Table 2. Part 1 asks us to state the meaning of the star symbols on some of the box plots. So, we got a star there, for example. So, stars are used on box plots to represent outliers. Okay, then part two says, suggest giving reasons, um, which of the months in table two is most likely to be, uh, summarised as the box plot marked Y. Okay, so, let's have a look. So, why is this guy? Now we can see that it has the lowest median. So first of all then let's say Y has the lowest median. Now that means that the mean is going to be fairly low. Now, there is one thing that's going to cock that up, and that is that we have an outlier all the way over here. So that outlier is going to increase the mean a bit. Uh, but the outlier is going to increase the mean now if we also look at the spread of the data there is a fairly big range and also a fairly big in the quarter range so there is a fairly large range and in the quarter range, which means the standard deviation is going to be quite large. So, let's have a look in the table. 
So, I can definitely rule out E because that's got a large mean. So that's gone. Now it's between A, B, C and D. So, they're all quite similar-ish, really. I reckon we would go for the one with the highest standard deviation. So, A has a very small standard deviation, so that's gone. And then between these three, I guess we would go for the lowest mean and the highest standard deviation, which is going to be B. So, I would say uh, it is likely B. Cool, job done.